We're going to bring in 12 News uh, reporter Adriano Rosas Rivera just hearing what he had to say and, you know, 20 years later, the emotion in his voice. Well, that was part of Gina Russo's mission. She was instrumental in bringing this park together and she wanted it to be a peaceful place for families to pay their respect. Now, the park's design, it's meant to honor those victims, but also honor their love of music. They feel the peace when they come here. Survivor Gina Russo often comes to the former site of the station nightclub, now a memorial honoring the victims, survivors, and first responders. My three-year-old grandson comes with me, but there's one monument that he goes to every single time. Um, there's the youngest victim of the fire, his name was Nick O'Neill. And my little grandson can come to this park and he walks in and goes right to Nick. Uh, the foundation's mission was to give something back to the families that they could be proud of, that they could come to and maybe find some peace. Music is woven into the five-year-old park's design. From the air, walkways form the shape of a guitar. Each monument is a speaker box. Bearing photos of victims, including Gina's then fiance, Fred. You're young, but that little disc on the middle you used to put in um, on your 45s on, on a record player. Effort still goes into keeping the park beautiful. People leave uh, nips, um, coffee cups that like had drink with their buddy or I just don't want it to become a, a dumping ground. And Gina says we can honor the victims in many ways. I, my wish for this year um, being the 20th year is that people recognize survivors more. A little bit more. The 100 who passed away are prime. They are, they are the reason, right, we are remembering. But there are so many survivors of this fire. It, throughout your day, if you, you, no matter how bad you think your day is, think about this and be grateful, number one, that maybe you didn't lose someone or you were not injured in this. Um, and then go out and do something, be, do something happy. Um, say hello to someone you never would have said hello to. Um, that's how we honor them. Now, Mike, we're here at, this was the former site of the club here on Coweset Avenue in West Warwick, and the park was years in the making. They fundraised $2 million to make it happen. The sixth anniversary, of course, is coming up in May. They'll be celebrating that then with a ceremony of sorts. So you can hear behind us someone playing a musical instrument. Not the first person that has come here today. There was somebody with a guitar, and that person went to every single picture and played a song there, kind of to to keep the memory alive that this was a club and music was a music big is alive part of and it. well here today. So, mm -hmm. Obviously, the uh, park is open to you at any time today or tonight, and of course, uh, later on this week, if you want to pay your respects, we have more coverage, live coverage from the uh, station park in uh, 5 30. Kim? All right, Mike and Adriana, thank you so much. And as we've been talking about, this fire certainly touched many lives. Sarah Ballard was only 18 when she lost her mother, Sarah June Telgarski. She says she is grateful that everyone is able to come together on a day like today. It's just so nice that people still remember and we can all come together and we all have this bond, even though we're all strangers. This was a big deal and it affected so many lives. And it's just so important that people don't forget that it happened and people you know, be safe when they go places. It's something I always tell my daughter. I'm like, make sure you know where your exits are. And Ballard says remembering that night and encouraging safety is one of the most important things we can do as a community. Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee and Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos placed a wreath at the memorial today. They took a few moments to walk around, reading the markers with the victims' names on them. Governor McKee says the fire at the station nightclub is one of those moments in history where you remember exactly where you were when it happened. I was a mayor at the time, but making sure that our, you know, rescue was, uh, you know, responding, but uh, for the families. But today is really a, more of a peaceful moment, right, that we just wanted to come by. The Lieutenant Governor and I pay our respects. We were able to interact, as you're doing, with, with families and uh, friends that have been impacted. And 
A formal ceremony will take place at the memorial in May, but loved ones, of course, as we've been telling you, have been visiting the site throughout today. And even though it's been two decades since the tragedy, you can still help make a difference in the lives of those who were impacted through the Station Nightclub Fire Children's Scholarship Fund. It's run through the Rhode Island Foundation. You can find a link on our website, WPRI.com. That's where you can also find even more coverage of our special report, Station Fire Remembrance 20 Years Later. That's all on our website, WPRI.com. You'll find a timeline of what happened and a photo gallery of those who died that night.